outlasted the life expectancy for most marriages and like tripled the life expectancy for most Hollywood relationships. So, and, and you're not married. Are you guys, is this by design? Are you, are you guys smarter than the rest of us? Yes. He is. I, I just, I've just never gotten along with somebody. So my, we never fight. Ever. You never fight? We never fight. I mean, we just... I don't know, we just have a good harmony together. I go away for the summertime, and I'm <laughs> on the road a lot, and so there's a lot of space between our times together. So we have a lot of, you know, special times together where it's just us, and Which is, yeah, that. the rest of the life isn't mundane or whatever, and we've lived in separate houses, we've lived together, we've, we're living uh, in we separate live houses. Together, it's, you, you survive living together, my, my compliments. When you told your father, he was cool with it, though, right? He was okay. He, he, um, he, being a dad first, he, you know, he said that I, he thought that an older man would appreciate me more than the, the guys that I had been dating. And so he really approved of somebody like Phil. I wasn't but an older man then, no. <laughs> no, I am. You were young. You were young. So... Then he said, you know, then it was kind of like, how are we going to figure this out for the organization? All right, so the old man says he's okay. You're an older guy. <laughs> but did he pull you aside? Never. Never? No. Have you had, have you had that conversation yeah. with any of your daughter's suitors or husbands? Yes, I scared most of my <laughs> my daughter's suitors. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Look, he's proud of that. Look at I'd be proud of it, too. I, I think there it's a go. great thing. There's a standard. There's a standard that they have to live up to, and I think they have to be really kind, and I think they have to know that the way we do things in the Jackson house is the right way. Being the daughter of a rich, famous father, how did you come out normal and healthy because this place eats its young um i think you know my dad emphasized education and you know i never i never um i never put that aside i always worked and even while i was going to school at usc to get my degree look at Jeannie was put in a situation where she was a hostess of her father's home at uh, Fair Play. Uh, fair Pick, Play. Fair Pick Fair. Pick Fair. Pick Fair. Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks I, home. Yeah, I love to make that mistake. But so she was going to college as a young college student, and there were parties that were rampaging through the house. I mean, that was a party central kind of place a lot of times. You know, so that's her dad. She had brothers that were 22, 24 at that time. So she saw all kinds of male behavior <laughs> that she probably said, but, this isn't what I'm going to turn right, out to be what, like. What I'm saying is I write all the time about fathers and sons. That's hard. It's easier for a daughter to usurp a father's power than it is for a son, I think, in some ways. What do you mean? Well, I think I think their, their ability to, I don't like the word manipulate, but to... Um, and um, use their wily persuasion. You think women are smarter? I just think they know how to use people better than men do. I think they know how to get their way in a lot of situations better. And in situations that I think are, are about power and about um, organizational, you know, taking over businesses and stuff, I, I, think, I think women present as much of a challenge as a son does to taking over a business. I think Jeannie's perfectly capable of taking over her father's business, and, and perhaps even more so than the brothers are. I read your book again Thank you. Thank you. last night, and the most touching section, pages, and you turn it over, was about the first time he leaves the Lakers. And you say, <laughs> he's going to Montana, and I don't know if we'll be back. Right. And he says, have some confidence in our love. Yeah. He did. 
I mean, I, it was, it was, uh, I think that's why going through this season wasn't as hard for me because I kind of know our connection now, or I know, I'm, I'm confident in that connection. But the first time when he was leaving, I didn't know if I was a matter of convenience or if there really was something there. You know, if you took away what we had in common, did we have enough to keep us together? And we found out that we did. So um, I think that's probably why I'm not freaking out so much about him leaving the Lakers this time, because I have that confidence. Are you freaking out at all? I hate to use a, a Yes, I'm freaking out because I'm worried about keeping him busy. And if he's not busy, he's going to drive me crazy, which, you know, I think most. So maybe he needs you. I don't know. I mean, I guess. You don't we'll know? See. It's 11 years. Come on. We'll the guy's see. got a schnook. I mean, I think he's he's got a lot to offer. You know, like to me, you know, the guy's like the smartest guy and he's his experience and he's wise and he's you know i mean he's not gonna go sit in a cave somewhere he's got things to to do and i don't know what the, they're gonna be but do you yeah. know what they're gonna be no. what hurt the most about the last game there's nothing that could convey my dismay as much as what happened I think when people ask me a week or two ago what I was most proud of, um, I said in this duration it was rebuilding the team that came back to win the championship and it go the finals three times because, um, you know, that team you know, came apart at the seams and a lot of teams don't survive that. I mean, it took, uh, you know, the Celtics, uh, you know, forever to try and get back to, to winning a it championship. Took, it took the Bulls five great... years to get back into the playoffs after you left. Yes. I mean, so it, excuse me, it can be a very difficult process to go through. Now, granted, Kobe was still a vital factor, but he had to be a sway should brought back into the fold in many ways. And, you know, now this team is totally intact. It's totally pre uh, prepared to move forward. When I came back the, the second time uh, on my return, you know, the, the provision was made that every decision that was going forward in personnel would come through me. So in that regard, there's got to be a whole lot of trust factor between all these people. They just can't drop somebody in on a, a person and just say, well, you know, here's somebody that we'd like you to, to take on. Um, the Ron Artest thing was a bit of a surprise. Uh, but... Do you like Ron? I like Ron. But, he, you know, his game is very, very different. It doesn't really fit us as a team. It didn't really fit us, but we managed to make it work last year. But the reality is, is that there was a time when Ron was talked about, and we did discuss Ron in depth as personnel and say, yeah, we need a strong enforcer-type guy like Ron to come into this organization prior to us winning championships and going to the finals. Being the genius sports writer that I am, uh, I picked the Lakers I'm to win take everything. That home for the what are you doing? You take that home? Yeah. Well, he gave me half of his fish, so I'm going to take my oh, bunless okay. burger. All right. So, oh. I, I picked the Lakers to win. Uh, and I, I knew their problems on the perimeter, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how it fell apart as it did with a sweep. I, I never would have anticipated that. There's, there's nothing that could convey my dismay as much as what happened. I mean, obviously, you know, losing a game that we should have won in game number one right. set the, set the yeah. table for things going wrong. Decidedly, Ron Artest getting thrown out in game number three, still having an opportunity to win game number three, being up by six points in three minutes and some seconds to go and not being able to finish a game. Still spoke about what was integrally wrong. There's something chemistry-wise wrong. What was wrong chemistry-wise? I have chemistry not been able to put my finger on it. Was it Powell? Was it Kobe? Was it... I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask the question. You know, there was, there was a point in, in the game where I, I went out off the bench and I gave a, a physical blow to, to you know, my... One of my 
my favorite players, Pau Gasol, because I felt he wasn't sharp, he wasn't mentally alert, he wasn't, you know, he didn't have his total heart into it. And that's the feeling I came away with with this team, is they, they couldn't bring themselves to that nth degree that you have to go to to say, we'll do whatever it takes to get through these playoffs. You don't know why? I haven't been able to find that out. What, what hurt the most? About the last game. Well, then we didn't compete. I mean, I don't know, obviously, I'd like to see Andrew not have a go through a situation, mm -hmm. but just competing wise. And, and it wasn't about us not wanting to do it, it was about Dallas seeing something in us right. that gave them the license to shoot the way they shot them all with no fear, with no sense of credibility. They just went ahead. Let me ask you about Lamar. Lamar is, uh, uh, by way of full disclosure, my daughter's favorite player. Um, but I know that he's looked to you as a, as a father figure. Like, and, and I don't mean that the way it sounds. No, it's a good I mean that authentically. Yeah. No, really. But he committed that foul there, and he, he broke first. And I'm, I'm wondering if, because he had said, Phil's raised me, if that hurt more. I understand Lamar's rationale. Zitsky took his free throw off the rim and, you know, yelled an obscenity up at him about don't practice on our free time or on my time or something like this. It kind of upstaged him, and, and he lost it. But I, I didn't think that Lamar was really totally focused on that day. He had, he had some physical things he was fighting through in the locker room before the game. Uh, sinus, sinusitis or sinus, he was getting his sinuses drained. You know, he was just, he just wasn't himself in that particular game. Did the prospect of a lockout have anything to do with you being gone? Yes. Or you were good? Totally. Yes. Would you be gone if, did the prospect of a lockout have anything to do with you being gone? Yes. Or you were good? Totally. Yes. So you're like telling this, he's me. like here. Yeah. So wait a minute, you're telling me. What happened was this, and I, you know, <laughs> Dr. Buss and I went out to lunch in the Phoenix series last year during the playoffs, and he said, you know, with the impending labor disagreement coming up, there's some things that we have to do as owners that make sense. And I said, well, obviously I really want, I'm really thinking about retiring now. But if there's going to be a lockout that's going to change the complexity, you know, I would consider coming back and coaching another year to carry the team forward to that particular point where there's a labor problem or whatever. To. I didn't, I didn't, you know, everybody's been talking about this for perhaps lasting a whole year. So, I mean, hey, I don't want an organization to have to pay a salary for a coach doing nothing. I mean, you know, they've, they've been really good to me salary-wise this whole time. But if I signed a two-year contract, then they'd have to pay for me. Would you feel not conflicted in your allegiance to the players as well, though? No, because that's not my my thing. I, I mean, I'm not involved in the other aspect of, you know, where the owners are with their relationship with the players. No, but but, but what I'm saying is that philosophically, this is, I mean, are you with the players or ownership? And I, and it's an obvious. It's a, it's a really it's a question. It's a loaded question. But I. I <laughs> no. You don't have to considering it. <laughs> how your life is. <laughs> basketball, basketball has to survive or else there's going to be a contraction and the teams are going to go back to a lower number of teams, which These means These are the loss opinions of, of Phil Jackson, not of the <laughs> Laker organization. Uh, nothing to do with it. I know, you're not an employee any longer. So. He was the Goldwater... Are you firing him? <laughs> what, he was no, the Goldwater I mean. Republican. <laughs> But no, I mean, the owners have to make money, and the players have to understand that, and they have to come to an agreement that makes sense between the two of them. And, you know, my estimation, it'll happen, and everybody will sit down and get to business sometime in the fall, and they'll 
they'll come to a point where either they say we can do this or else they say we can't do this and we're gonna have to sit back and wait another time period to do it so it gets straight because this is a critical time for sports there's, there's you know a thousand channels to watch now I told Shaq when I took over as head coach in our first initial meeting as a team that the MVP trophy should be named after him when he retired. Wow. How do you want your boyfriend, who do I call, to be remembered? As, you mean from... As a Laker, a bull, a net? Well, I was... Uh, net. <laughs> I was very um, proud of the fact that he coached the Lakers longer than he coached the Bulls. You know, because when we first started dating and we'd be walking down the street, people would be like, Michael Jordan! And, you know, like, they it was all Bulls, Bulls, Bulls. But as time went on, you know, and the success that he brought to the Lakers, um, I, I think that people now, when they see him, they're, you know, Kobe, Shaq, Lakers. Did Shaq get what he, get what he should have out of his talent? I told Shaq when I took over as head coach in our first initial meeting as a team that the MVP trophy should be named after him when he retired. Wow. So your answer is no. Right. I mean... This is a guy that should and could have been the MVP player for 10 consecutive years. Now, when he went in to have a toe operation in 2003, that, that changed some of the mechanics that he had to play with. And that was, a, a, you know, he's played seven, seven years since that time. What do you want to be remembered for? 11 championships? Is it that simple? Or? Well, I think that's the essence of what it's about, is winning. It's about the winning aspect. It's always about that. I mean, people remember you know, Bill Russell as the greatest center because he won 11 championships. Pat Riley, I remember sitting in a hotel bar with him in Florida when he just took the heat job, yeah. and he swore, yeah. I will not coach into my 60s, and of course he did. Because I, I think that coaching is like writing. It, you don't choose it, it chooses you. No. You're going to be back in two years. <laughs> wow. No, I, um, I don't think so. I, I, mean, I, I really don't. You know, I, I, I'm done at the present time. I don't know how long I'll be done, and I don't know when the next offer comes along, how I'll <laughs> feel about it, but I'll probably say I don't want to go. And then, you know, it'll happen again in another year or whatever, and I'll have to consider it and ruminate about it and say, you know, what I feel like at that time. You know, there's some, you know, there's just some things that happen when you get older. You have physical disability. You can't quite keep up. You done with surgeries? No. Yeah, there's surgery still to go. You, you know, you want to be on the court up and down with the players so that when things happen in the concept of coaching practices, you're there. You stop it. You say, this is what has to happen here. These are the way things happen between players that make this work defense or this work offensively. And so you're on top of it. You know, in the last year, I've been coaching for mid-court, like Adolf Rupp sitting on the stool. <laughs> you know, sit on the stool and coach from half court and, you know, try and yell it out to the players. But I know in the heart of hearts that I have to be right there with them at that collision point in their up and down activity. You know, and I haven't been able to do that in six years. So that's the difference. And um, so that's something, you know, well, will I get that when I have a knee operation or a replacement? I don't know. You know, we'll have to wait and see. You know what? I don't care if you come back or not, but I hope you guys stay in love. Cheers. <laughs> that's sweet. <laughs> See you next time for another round.